behind me is Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. It's one of the most famous works of art. He's very famous for using this element in art called movement. And he does it using lines, shapes, and colors. If you look at this night sky behind me, you can see the lines, the shapes, and the colors kind of brushing apart and then coming into a twist. Now we're going to look at a work of art that has a little more rhythm, but still has movement, but by a very different artist named Keith Haring. Let's go check his artwork out. Our artist that is showing rhythm is Keith Haring. And if you look at behind us, it kind of looks like it's like a dance party. He's using lines, shapes, and colors to create this kind of movement of dance. Very similar to Vincent Van Gogh, Keith Haring is using movement and rhythm. So we have two artists that did something very different, but created movement and rhythm. And now we're going to look at a couple more examples on my computer, and then we're going to get into creating our own artwork that uses rhythm and movement. I can't wait to get started. Let's get moving. Let's take a look at Keith Haring's dance. And we talked a lot about rhythm. So we can see that Keith Haring is trying to replicate or make rhythm using these things called action lines. And we can see the people are moving kind of in a dance um, manner. So Keith Haring did a really good job talking about rhythm. Now, what happens if we look at a different artist, um, Edgar Degas, and he painted a lot of ballerinas, but we still see this movement. Now, we don't see the action lines that Keith Haring was using, but if there was, they might look something like this. We can see there's kind of a spin move. She's doing her hair's flying out. That's showing that movement and rhythm. And you can see there's a little bit of movement coming in from this side as well. So another use of rhythm, but looks very different than Keith Haring's. So let's look now at Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. So this one is one of the most popular paintings of of all time and his movements is very easy to see that he wants this wind to kind of go in these curl um, almost spiral line and movement and he's using his light and he's using color and shape to show all of this movement he's going from one side to the other side and then kind of up and around so let's take a look at the last work of art we're going to be looking at today. And this one is called The Great Wave of Kanawaga, printed by Hakusui. And he has a similar idea like Vincent Van Gogh, where he is trying to generate movement using these lines, shapes, and even colors. The break of the waves are a lot lighter. The darker implies that maybe it's the underneath. But he's still using movement with line and it's coming from the different side. He's not coming from the same side as Vincent Van Gogh, but you can see there's a lot of similarities to both of these. So artists use rhythm and movement and their artwork can look very, very different. But now let's move into an artwork that we're going to be creating today. Okay, so the next word we're going to be talking about is a silhouette. And a silhouette, the best way to think about that is it's really just the lines around the outside of an object. So I drew this blue jay, and now if I want to take this blue jay and change it into a silhouette, what I got to do is get rid of all the interior. Now, if you're using a pencil, what you would do is just erase all your lines on the inside, your shapes on the inside. But if you don't, if you didn't use a pencil or if you use a marker like I did, what we're going to do is color it in black. So I'm going to show you what a silhouette looks like once I color this blue jay in. Okay, so now what you can see is I blacked out everything on the inside, so I have the silhouette of a blue jay. Now another way to do that is just by drawing. If you've drawn the object a lot of times, you can kind of just look at it and just draw those outside lines. This is also a silhouette. Now the only thing is I didn't color in my, um, my stick, and so that's not a silhouette. My branch is not a silhouette, but my blue jay is. 
And so what you can see is by just drawing these, I'm gonna run out of space, drawing these outside lines, I have two different examples of silhouettes. Now that's important today because we're gonna be using a silhouette. So if you need to practice, draw an object, erase out the inside, or you can draw an object and color in the inside. But this is not our project for today. This is just us learning the word silhouette. Let's move into our project for today. Okay, so for this part of the assignment, all you're gonna need is a sheet of paper and a pencil. Now we gotta focus on a silhouette and I'm going to draw a silhouette of a girl. Um, you can draw a silhouette of a soccer player, whatever you want, it's your chance to be creative. Just remember the silhouette means the lines around the outside. So I'm gonna start off and I'm going to draw in the middle of my paper, kind of a head. Now I'm doing this very lightly because you know that I'm going to erase some of this. I'll maybe make an arm. Maybe she's got like a fist on her hip. I'm gonna say like, maybe I want my feet to come down around here. Let's give her like a little skirt maybe. And we'll bend her other leg a little bit, giving some detail. And you can see I'm sketching very lightly because if I make a mistake and when I make a mistake, then I go back in and I kind of remove some pieces of it. Okay, so getting pretty close to where I wanna be. Okay, so I have kind of a silhouette of a person standing, maybe a girl. And what I'm gonna do is the part of movement that we talked about, we're going to put in hair blowing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make kind of the outline of hair blowing, okay? So now, as we talked about with silhouettes, silhouettes means the lines around the outside. So line around the outside, line around the outside, line around the outside. Line around the outside, line around the outside, line around the outside. And now I have my silhouette. Now we talked about using an eraser to go back into the middle and getting rid of some of those interior lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab an eraser this and those lines on the inside I'm gonna get rid of because I don't need them they're not of any use to me okay so now we talked a little bit about using line to create uh, movement and so we're gonna start with that element um, what I want you to do now is I want you to pick uh, let's go with maybe six different colors so I'm gonna use pink yellow orange I like this blue and let's say I need two more. So I'm gonna go with this lime green and one more, let's see. Yeah, I'll go with this like purplish. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and build in a pattern using lines to show some kind of movement. Now we see her standing there with no movement. So first I'm gonna do is add in horizontal lines to go up. But when I get to her hair, I do see there's movement there. So I'm gonna to have to use the organic flowing lines to change her hair, okay? Now I'm gonna go into fast forward mode for the bottom here, and then I'm gonna stop when I get to the hair so we can do that part together.
Okay, so I have my my horizontal lines. You can vary in, again, thick, thin. Now I'm gonna add in the movement to the hair, and I'm gonna talk you through that as I get going, but again, I'm gonna do that in fast forward so you can see it at a quicker rate. Now I'm gonna get my eraser ready and I'm gonna get rid of my pencil lines that I created before my color pencils or your crayon or marker, whatever you're using to add in your color patterns. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to remove it just leaving that silhouette, but a silhouette, silhouette made out of lines Okay, so the other thing we talked about was movement in relationship to shape, not just lines. So now we're gonna add in a walkway and a stream with using shapes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with the walkway and I'm gonna make these shapes getting smaller and smaller and kind of trailing away. So now we have kind of an area where I maybe would like her to walk. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in some water there and we can use these lines like Vincent Van Gogh did, these quick expression lines. We can move those with color. Um, actually, let's, let's go ahead and put that on this side too a little bit. And then, you know, in the sky, Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night, we had some curly winds. We can go ahead and do that. Now, when I go ahead and I color this in now, I'm going to use maybe like thicker lines to separate it from my foreground, which is my girl here. So let's go ahead and get started on that. using shape, you have movement using line, and now you have movement using color. And it looks like all our movement is sweeping from one side to the next. All right, guys, I can't wait to see what you come up with, what your ideas are for creating movement and rhythm in art. So until I see you next time, stay safe and stay creative.